Before I get started with the story, let me give a shout out to Willis HL for sending me this story. And this one right here, it was posted on September 9th, 2021. And this right here proves without the shadow of a doubt that even if black people do what needs to be done in order to make sure that they have all of their affairs in order, that no matter how much they have in order, all T's are crossed, all I's are dotted, that it's still not enough. And this is actually going to echo off of what Tariq was talking about on his channel when it came to those black um organizations putting together millions of dollars of money to buy a mall in Crenshaw, but they decided to give it to a lower bidding white organization. So this is um going to be talking about some black U.S. laborers uh, who got basically looked over in favor of some white immigrants. Now, you got to think about this. These are black U.S born individuals who got hired who got looked over for some palm colored people from across the pond let that sink in not even palm colored people that's from here but from those who are not from here let's get into it six black farm workers in mississippi say in a new lawsuit that their former employer brought white laborers from south africa to do the same jobs they were doing and that the farm has been violating federal law by paying that white immigrants more for the same type of work now before i go any further this also reminds me of the story that happened in dc where it was black people there in ward eight who were supposed to get hired to do construction jobs based on a contract they violated the contract and hired mexicans from other parts of the DMV area. And when I say other parts, I'm talking about mainly from the Virginia side to come into the city and do those jobs. And the black people there got so mad and so irate that they went and protested up there and basically ran them people off of their jobs. And you had people who didn't understand what was going on, tried to come at the black people sideways. I'm like, y'all need to really look into why they did that. They didn't do it because they didn't want them to work. They did that because they violated a, a written contract by the city. To the people of Ward 8, they violated the contract. If you violate the contract, that's what happens. But so many people, especially other black people, were trying to throw the cape on for Mexicans. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, do y'all really know what's going on? And see, the thing is, you're looking at a story like this. You probably have some people that will say the same thing and don't even have all of the facts. And then when stuff like this happens, this is what gives palm color, especially those in the media, to push this narrative that black people don't want to work. That's not the case. They want to work, but when you have people bringing in other people to do your job and they get paid more than you do for doing the same thing, what do you expect them to do? When you don't own the infrastructure versus when you do. I was listening to somebody and they said, if this nation falls, it's going to be at the hands of the, dom the so-called dominant society. And I agree wholeheartedly. It's not going to be on anyone else but them. And for some reason, I think they are enjoying watching it fall. Mississippi Center for Justice and Southern Migrant Legal Services filed with the federal lawsuit Wednesday on behalf of the six workers Pit against Pitts Farm Partnership, which grows cotton, soybeans and corn in the Mississippi Delta Sunflower State. I'm sorry, County. The lawsuit said the farm violated regulations of foreign worker visa program, which was quite, which, which requires equal treatment of U.S. workers and their immigrant counterparts. It seeks an unspecified amount in damages, including money. The U.S. workers say they were shorted because of the uneven pay scale. So they brought in people from another nation to come in and do this work. Now, it wouldn't have been a problem if they didn't violate, but they did. They brought them in from another nation to do the same work, but paid them more. And then. In the process of them paying them more, they shorted the ones who was already working there. They shorted their paychecks just to pay the immigrants more. So now they've lost money to get to get more money to some goddamn immigrants. Which hurts them financially. And they just did it at the drop of a hat like it was nothing. But like I said, when you don't own the infrastructure, this is what happens. The Associated Press left messages by phone and email with Pitts Farm seeking comment about the lawsuit. There was no immediate response by Thursday afternoon. 
Four of the plaintiffs, Andrew Johnson, Wesley Reed, Gregory Strong, and Richard Strong, said they did agricultural work from February through November, and Pitt's Farm Partnership usually paid them the minimum wage of $7.25 an hour with $8.25 an hour for weekend work. Two of the plaintiffs, Stacy Griffin and James Simpson, drove trucks for the farming operation during harvest time, usually the late July or early August through November. The lawsuit said they had been paid $9 an hour since 2018. That doesn't even sound like a living wage. The farm paid the white workers from South Africa $9.87 an hour in 2014, and that rate increased almost years until it reached $11.83 an hour in 2020. Amal Bohabib, an attorney for Southern Migrant Legal Services, said that H-2A program allows U.S. firms to hire foreign workers when no U.S. workers are available. It does not allow farmers to pay their American workforce less than the foreign workers or to replace willing and able U.S. workers. The lawsuit said the Pitts family hired a white supervisor who gave employees their daily duties and had the power to hire and fire workers. Occasionally, the supervisor used racial slurs, the lawsuit said. Pitts Farms was informed about the supervisor's use of racial slurs and did nothing. The lawsuit said the farm started bringing in white workers from South Africa in 2014 using a placement firm to hire a seasonal labor in the front. And that from 2014 to 2020, the farm did not make the same effort to recruit U.S. workers as it did to obtain uh, obtain migrant. I'm sorry, immigrant workers. So they didn't even try to seek out U.S. workers. But I bet you what and this is what they do. They don't seek them out. And then they hire in immigrants to work the jobs as if they're going to say no. And then. When people say who are from here that, hey, um, why didn't you know why they get in the jobs? They'll come back and say, oh, you're being lazy. You don't want to work. It's an endless cycle. Going back to that one I did about the construction, they try to put that on black people saying, oh, they were too lazy. They didn't want to work. No, they wanted to work, but they overlooked them, broke the contract and went and hired some Mexicans that didn't even live in Ward 8. Because it's so easy to say, oh, black people are lazy. It's so easy to say that. Ty Pickens, I'm sorry, Pinkins of, Miss, of the Mississippi Center for Justice said in the news release that with, it, with high unemployment in the Mississippi Delta, it is unacceptable and unlawful for farmers to hire outside workers when local residents need jobs. Unfortunately, this case is emblematic of a disastrous pattern in the South. It's not just the South. Our research indicates that farm owners are increasingly abusing the H-2A program and denying opportunities to U.S. workers. The case also reflects our nation's deep, ugly history of exploiting black labor. For far too long, powerful businesses have abused black Americans for profit. Don't we know it? Mississippi is a largely rural state with poultry, soybeans, timber, cotton, and corn as the top agricultural products. In August 2019, U.S. immigration agents raided seven chicken processing plants in Mississippi and arrested 680 mostly Latino workers in the largest such operation in the last decade, in at least a decade. Two years after the raid, Mississippi Center for Justice said about 230 people had been deported because of previous immigration orders or other causes, and about 400 were awaiting hearings. That, like I said, as messed up as this is, it doesn't surprise me in the least bit that this continues to go on. And like I said already, this is what they use as a method to try to say black people don't want to work. When it's clear that they do, but they hire outside people and they really went outside with it. They went outside of the establishment to get these people to replace them. But that's that's indicative of what is going on right now with the replacement of Americans. Especially black Americans with immigrants. Like this is something that's going to continue to happen going forward. I call it, you know, how they said the great migration. I call this the great replacement. Like, that's what I feel is happening at this current moment of time. And it's just unfortunate because you have people like these guys in this picture who want to work, who want to do the work, but you want to short their check. And they do that so they can get them to leave and they'll bring in more pay the immigrants more. And they haven't even been there that long. Yeah, like that's a setup. And then they said they hired a white supervisor who's been using racial slurs. And this is Mississippi. That doesn't surprise me at all either because of the location. But I hope their lawsuit goes through and I hope that they're successful with it because that's really, really, really messed up. But um, y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments.